FYF Sportsman, it's Lamont. We back with another podcast video. Today we're going to talk a little NFL going into week 14. As I've told you guys time and time again, I, I know we don't do a lot of videos on the NFL, but as this NFL season start, uh, you know, kind of comes down to the end, when these division races become more and more important, we, we get to round out how the playoff seating is going to be. Um, I want to dive into this. Um, especially going into the playoffs. But before we get started, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to the video if you have not done so already. Um, make sure you hit that notification bell. We've been going live, you know, almost five times a week, maybe six. Um, we're going to get back to our Saturday Powerhouse live sessions when we go live for five, six, seven, eight, even nine hours. Again, I mean, as, as long as you, if you guys have been asking for it, so we're going to give it to you. So, again, make sure you hit that notification bell so you know about everything that we got going on with FYF Sports. Uh, don't forget to follow us on social media as well, um, especially if you want additional information on giveaways um, and, and other events that we have with FYF Sports. Uh, but today what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be giving um, our picks we're going, to, we're going to run through all of these games for week 14 in the NFL. We're going to break down each matchup. And again, we're not going to dive too deep into it, um, but we're going to touch on, you know, where these, each team is at and, and who do we predict to win these games going into week 14. Again, as you round out the end of the season, there are some big time matchups. I mean, when we talk about teams like the New England uh, Patriots uh, who, who are reeling after a tough loss last week, how are they going to bounce back? Can they make? Can they finish out the season strong? Do they at least put themselves in condition, contention to get a playoff spot? So these are the things that we're going to be talking about um, this week. Um, also, as we end the show, we're going to be talking about some other news and notes uh, for what we have coming next week. Uh, so go ahead and start these NFL picks out. We're going to start it out with um, one of the more important matchups of the day. Uh, we got the New England Patriots. And the Los Angeles Rams, the New England Patriots, are going into they're going into this matchup at six and six, coming off a tough loss. The Rams are coming in at eight and four. Their defense is looking pretty stout uh, in this particular matchup right here. Um, I'm gonna have to go with the Rams. I gotta go with the Rams. Uh, the, you know the Patriots. They haven't quit on this season. That's the one thing I don't see the Patriots quitting on this England. But, but the Patriots are 0-3 on the road uh, against winning teams. And the Rams are much more talented than the, than the Patriots. So, you know, with, with, the, with the Rams coming off an impressive double-digit uh, victory against the Cardinals, I think that that momentum can carry them uh, into this week's game against the, the Patriots, who seem to be reeling right now, uh, just dealing with a lot of things. Cam Newton. Um, uh, he was benched. Cam Newton is benched, so that quarterback position is wide open. I think that's probably one of the more glaring question marks for this Patriot team. Um, and then that once dominant New England Patriot defense is now ranking at the, the bottom of the NFL. Um, so the, 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 the Patriots have a lot of issues going in this season after losing Tom Brady. Um, you know, when we throw in the traveling you know, when we, we when we let's look at all of the questions on this Patriot roster, um, especially with the injury report, um, this is your, this is an easy pick. I got the the Los Angeles Rams winning this game big over the New England Patriots, and I predict that score. And if we and we also want to do some score predictions, I would say I'm gonna give that score. I would say 27 to 20, LA. So I'm gonna give that. I'm gonna give that next game up. Next game up, we got the Kansas City Chiefs and the Miami Dolphins. Kansas City Chiefs come into this matchup at 11 and 1. Miami comes into this matchup at 8 and 4. All right. Obviously, Kansas City's the best team in the league, um, but the Miami Dolphins, at you know, are, are are probably one of the best teams in the NFL um, against the spread offense. And we know Kansas City does that very well. So, so now we we have two styles of play that are clashing right now. We're going to see who can prevail. Um, I I feel like the Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs can potentially pull that out. That's who you had. You got to go with the best team in the league. Um, but you know the Dolphins. Are, but the Dolphins much much of their success this year has came because of their defense. All right. Now the Chiefs. 
didn't play well last week against Denver. Um, and, and with the Steelers losing in week 13, um, Kansas City, you know, they're very much in play for the AFC number one seed. So that that's so at least we know Kansas City still has something to play for, um, albeit although they have been looking very dominant. Um, but again, this is not going to be an easy matchup for the Kansas City Chiefs. This is not a team that they can gloss over and overlook, primarily because of how well Miami does plays against the spread offense. So um, I, I don't know, man. This is going to be a tough game. I, I mean, th- this could go either way. I mean, I I don't I don't I, I'm not going to look at anyone with a side eye if they pick Miami to win this game. Because Miami's defense has looked stout this year. Um, however, the final score prediction for this game is I have the Kansas City Chiefs winning this game 30 to maybe like 17 or 21. Um, I just think that that Kansas City offense is going to be too much uh, for the Miami Dolphins you know, over the course of an entire game. All right. Next up, man, the next game we got is the Tennessee Titans versus the Jacksonville Jaguars, Tennessee Titans versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. Tennessee Titans coming to this game eight and four. Jacksonville Jaguars one and eleven. And obviously, Jack, Jack, Jacksonville has been struggling this season. Um, but although Jacksonville has been struggling this season, whenever they play Tennessee, they always find a way to play them close. Um, when they and when they met earlier, and, and, and it was the same way when they met earlier in the season. So. You know, four four of the last five games have been decided by four or fewer points. So again, Tennessee can't go into this game thinking that it's an easy win. I mean, when you when you're playing when you're playing a familiar opponent, when you're playing a team that knows everything that you do, this could you know this could be one of those games where you play down to the level of competition and you can find yourself losing this game. And 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 this is not the game you want to lose. I mean, at an eight and four record. You, you, you probably want to try to end the season with 11 to 12 wins. You want to make sure you walk out of this game with the W. Um, so, again, this is a must-win game. This is a must-win game for the Tennessee Titans. Although, I, I think they have a large margin of error, especially with Jacksonville, how much they've struggled this year. Um, Tennessee Titans, they have the leading register in the NFL, Derrick Henry. Um, but he's going to be down for the second week in a row. Um, so, again... Basically, basically, I think it's really hard to picture this very, very soft Jaguar defense keeping the NFL's leading rusher, Derrick Henry, down for a second week in a row. Now, Derrick Henry was stifled a little bit last week. He struggled in a loss to Cleveland. I just don't think it's that anomaly is going to happen back-to-back weeks. I mean, you know, we saw Cleveland Browns slow him down. I don't see that happening again against the Jags, especially a team that struggled defensively. So, uh, you, some people you could go with the some people. I think a lot of people could go with the underdog um, in this game. I'm not one to really jump out the window and go that far. I'm predicting Tennessee Titans to win this game. I expect them to put up 30 to 40 points on the Jaguars. I don't see the Jaguars going scoreless. I don't see it being a blowout. But um, I have the Tennessee Titans win this game. Uh, 30 to 24 30 24 maybe i'm giving the jaguars a little bit too much on the score um, but again they always play this tennessee titan team close all right next game we got is the arizona cardinals at six and six versus the new york giants all right cardinals at six and six giants at five and seven um this is this is a this is a tougher matchup to decide, you know. You know, you know, you can't really argue with the Giants, you know. The, you, you, we all know that the Giants have been, they haven't played up to the level of expectation as we would thought. They, they both have, I would say, equal talent on those rosters. Um, but for whatever reason, the Giants haven't been able to put it together on the field. Um, and so, and, and so, also we would go, you know, on paper, it's hard to see. Where the Giants will create scoring, it's really hard to see those opportunities. Uh, but you know that's okay. Uh, Joe Judge's defense is carrying the NFC East top squad. Um, and just this past week, New York, you know they sacked Russell Wilson five times, allowing 215 passing yards. So again, that's a positive that the the, the New York Giants can continue if they if they can continue to build on that. Maybe they can give Kyler Murray and the and the Cardinals. 
that maybe they can give the Kyler Murray and the Cardinals some problems. Um, now, the NFL's reigning rookie of the year is coming off arguably the worst performance of the season. Um, maybe this could be a bounce bounce back performance. And, and if this could be a bounce back performance, then the, the Giants are going to be they're going to be in trouble. They're going to be in big trouble. So. Uh, in this particular matchup right here, I think this is probably going to be one of the more boring matchups of the day. Uh, I'm actually going to roll with the uh, Giants on this one. I'm actually going to roll with the Giants on this one. I think they're playing better. I think the Cardinals are in a little funk right now. I don't know if they'll be able to get out of it this week. I got the Giants winning this game 27-20. Um, now, I could be wrong. I definitely could be wrong. The Cardinals, again, I, 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 I would easily say that these teams, talent-wise, are very comparable i would say close to being equal but i just think the giants are playing a little bit better right now especially coming off that big win against seattle last week so i got the giants winning this game over the arizona cardinals all right next up we got the minnesota vikings minnesota vikings at six and six versus the tampa bay buccaneers seven and five i think both of these teams um have disappointed somewhat this year i think we expected a little bit more a little bit more out of both teams um but you know the minnesota vikings they are suddenly alive in the nfc playoff picture um they failed to cover three consecutive spreads and now they're running into the tampa bay buccaneers on the road so uh most most people don't really like minnesota's odds in this particular situation um i don't either i i expect tampa bay to win this game i think they're playing a little bit better um you know, on a three-game home stand against teams that have won a combined eight games this se season, uh, the Vikings, uh, the Vikings outscored said opponents by a grand total of uh, 84 to 83, um, and, and that's not that's not saying much right there. That means though that that once highly touted Viking defense has not been showing up. I'm not buying. I'm not buying into Minnesota on the road against. Uh, arrested Tampa Bay Buck team. I'm not buying into that. The Bucks have struggled this year on short rest. Obviously, they have an older roster, um, but in prime, especially in prime time against high quality opponents. But in this game, um, especially coming off a Sunday bye, um, I don't think Minnesota is going to have the firepower to beat Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So I just kind of think it's like a wrong place, wrong time situation for Minnesota. I'm picking the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to win this game 28 to 20 over the Vikings. Um, just don't think Minnesota. I just don't think they, they I don't I don't think they're playing well enough right now to beat to beat a well rested Tampa Bay Bucks team. So Tom Brady and the Bucks take that one. All right, next game of the day, we got the Houston Texans and the Chicago Bears. Houston Texans and the Chicago Bears. Houston at 4-8, and eight, Bears at 5-7. and seven. All right. Now, the Houston Texans have little to lose and will be putting up fights on a weekly basis. That's, and that's that's been consistent. Um, the, you know, Houston, I don't know how they fell off. I mean, with all the talent that they've had in the past and, and to see where they are now this year, I think is just absolutely sad. But that being the case, nearly everyone is picking Houston to win this game and, and is what is essentially just like a pick em type game um, with Matthew Stafford, you know, struggling. Uh, all right, but the one thing that we can say about this Houston team is the Houston defense is, I would say, more vulnerable than Chicago's. Um, but I, just when you know, the, 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 the difference in this game, I would say, is going to be Deshaun Washington. Um, I'll take Deshaun Watson over anything the Bears can offer, especially at the quarterback position. Um, in fact, you know, that's the spot in which these teams will differ the most. So I think the quarterback play is going to separate is quarter quarterback play is going to separate the, the difference between both of these teams who struggled this season. I think Deshaun Watson is going to be that difference maker. Um, you know, Watson is the NFL's third highest rated passer. You know, he's right behind uh, Aaron Rodgers and Pat Mahomes. And, and th that that makes it all the more disappointing to see where this Houston Texan team is, especially with Deshaun Watson at quarterback. So my pick in this game, uh, my pick in this game is I got the Houston Texans winning 30-17. Uh, to 17. Um, Just don't think the Bears offense um, with Mitchell Trubisky is going to be 
consistent enough um, to keep up with the scoring of Deshaun Watson and the Houston Texans. All right, next game of the day. All right, so we got the Denver Broncos and the Carolina Panthers, 4-8. 4-8 and 4-8. Eight, and eight and eight. Two coin flip teams. I don't think this is a very strong matchup. Uh, I mean... If, if I'm, my, my head would tell me just to go with the Denver Broncos, but I mean, with their inconsistent play this year, is and, and, and there's just as many positives and, and, and negatives for both teams. So it's one of the harder matchups to pick of the day. I mean, again, just similar to the last matchup that we talked about, I, I think it's going to come down to quarterback play. Um, Broncos, their quarterback Drew Locke it, it has the, the league's lowest uh, qualified passer rating uh, and care. And, and Carolina's defense ranks towards the bottom of the league. Uh, they could allow, maybe you know, I could, I can see this Carolina team allowing Locke to stick around um, and, and score enough points to stay in this game. So, you, I, I, I'm, a, I'm gonna go with the Carolina Panthers in this game. Um, two, two, two underwhelming teams. I, I think the Panthers do have enough on that roster to be competitive. Um, I see the Panthers winning this game by a field goal, 24 to 21. Next up, we got the disappointing Dallas Cowboys at three and nine versus the equally disappointing Cincinnati Bengals at two nine and one. Um, it, it 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 is sad what's going on in Dallas right now, y'all. It is absolutely sad, especially with all the talent they have on the roster. You know, it's it's just a, it takes a messy game. For the struggling Cowboys to, you know, not only be favored, you know, and it's sad that the Dallas Cowboys are even favored in this game or there's a team that they could be favored against, but they're actually favored against the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, both of these teams cannot wait for their season to end. Um, already without the number one pick, Joe Burrow on the center, Cincinnati. Uh, they also lost left tackle Jonah Williams uh, to a knee injury last week, you know, with with their with their line and just complete disarray and Joe Burrow um, and Joe Mixon out as well, it is hard to even it's hard to say that the Bengals can even win this game and the team that, that you know they've only averaged about ten points a game in the last four weeks so you know I I, I got to go with Dallas primarily because of Ezekiel Elliott I think he can have a big day on the ground um, this is not gonna be a eye-popping matchup, but I do see the Dallas Cowboys winning this game big uh, against the banged-up Cincinnati Bengals team. I, I, my score prediction, I would say 35-17 for the Dallas Cowboys. I, I think this is a game where they can finally look like the Cowboys that we, we would have hoped to have seen um, going into the season before Dak Prescott got injured. All right, next matchup we got is the Washington football team at 5-7 and seven versus the San Francisco 49ers, also at 5-7. and seven. Um, San Francisco, um, in this game, San Francisco's last five losses have all come by double-digit margins. Uh, while, Washington, while all four of Washington's victories um, during a, a recent 4-2 and two stretch have come by at least six points. And, and, and three have come by more than 11 points. So, uh, I, I mean, there's some positives to look at right there for the Washington football team. The 49ers, again, will be playing a home game here in Arizona uh, because of COVID-19 and because of the restrictions in Santa Clara County. Um, so I think that may be affecting uh, how they've played this year. I, I don't know what's going on in Santa Clara County and why they are putting these restrictions up, um, but it, it, it's, it's crazy. So... Um, that could be doing a number on the team, you know. You know, not being able to play in your home stadium. It's like every game is a road game. Whew, I don't know. Uh, with the circumstances going on with the San Francisco 49ers, the circumstances them not being able to play home games, I just got to pick the Washington football team right now. That's the safest pick. I got to pick the Washington football team right now. They, they haven't been playing bad as of late. Um, too many question marks circling around this San Francisco team. Um, Got to go with Washington and I would say a close game. But again, I think this game can go either way. But I think Washington could potentially pull it out um, um, with the slight edge. 
Uh, we got the 0-12 New York Jets. I don't know what's up with teams out of New York struggling this year, but man, they are struggling. 0-12 New York Jets versus the Seattle Seahawks. Seahawks coming off a disappointing loss, man. Just a disappointing loss. So, you know, sure, Seattle just lost to the Giants, uh, but the Seahawks Seahawks quarterback Russell Westbrook usually bounces back from poor performances, especially when he's playing trash teams. So I expect him to have a really, really big bounce back performance against the 0-12 Jets. I don't think we really need to to dwell and and talk about this matchup too much. Um, I think Seattle wins big. I would say they drop between 35 to 40 points. Maybe the Jets can put up 10 to 17 points, but I don't think it's going to be close whatsoever. Um, another matchup. This is actually going to be a really good matchup right here. We got the Colts at 8-4 versus the Raiders at 7-5. and five. All right. Now, the big question for the Colts this year is, are the Colts a Super Bowl contender? Or are they just an average team that just occasionally gives you glimpses that makes you think they're really good? And then when we look at the, the Raiders, when we look at the Raiders, are the Raiders a playoff caliber uh, a team, you know, as they appear to be in the first three months of the season? Or are they just crashing back to earth, you know, after in consecutive embarrassing performances, you know, against the Falcons and the Jets? So I think both teams have major questions. Um, the the Colts are just a hard team to get an accurate read on. Um they, you know, you can count them out as a legitimate contender, and then the Colts will come out and win emphatically against a good team. So that's one of the most annoying thing about the Colts is, is when you begin to count them out, they come back and make you think, dang, they can really win the Super Bowl. Um, so, so it's kind of it's kind of hard to choose between these teams. So, you know, I, I just gotta I gotta go with I mean, obviously the Colts right now are you know I'm from Indianapolis. Um, I'm just going to go with the Colts. I honestly don't even know much about the Raiders this year um, other than how they started the season. So I'm going to go with the Colts. Um, I, I think the Raiders can can score against this Colt defense. I would say this game, I think this game is going to be separated by a field goal. I got the Colts winning this game 30-27. We got the Green Bay Packers at 9-3, MVP quarterback Aaron Rodgers. And then we got the Detroit Lions at 5-7. This is one of those games right here. This is one of those. This is one of those games, and I want you guys to keep an eye on this game. This is where one of those games where I can see Green Bay falling asleep and allowing a team like the De- Detroit Lions to sneak in and get a win that nobody expect that nobody expected. So, um, the Green Bay Packers have laid some eggs this season, um, but when they win, they usually do so convincingly. I would say, I would say definitely just tread carefully. Um, if you are a Green Bay team, if you if the Green Bay Packers should tread carefully in this game, I think I think the Detroit Lions can catch them sleeping. Um, and I'm gonna predict the upset. I'm gonna predict the upset. I have the Detroit Lions winning this game, uh, 34 to 27. I I I just I just see Green Bay slipping up. Um, against a rival team that just really hasn't played up to par this year. Again, I got to pick one upset pick. It might as well be the Packers. So, you know, if they prove me wrong, oh, well, that's fine. Uh, next up, we got the Saints at 10-2. Philadelphia Eagles, 3-8-1. This Eagle team, man, complete complete utter disappointment. They're, they're right there with the Dallas Cowboys. Um, but Philadelphia has officially benched the NFL interception leader, Carson Wentz. They officially bench Carson Wentz. Um, that at this stage in the in the stage in the season, that doesn't bode well for any team when you have to bench your quarterback and you're playing one of the best teams in the NFL. Um, that just just that just when I heard that news alone, you're benching Carson Wentz. I, I don't need to really hear any el- anything else. I mean, you, you're playing you, you're you're playing against a Sa- Saints team. Um, where four of their last five wins have been by at least 14 points. Um, they're playing pretty good right now. But, and, you know, and obviously without Drew Brees on the field, they're not as explosive. But this is still a very good team that can put up a lot of points. Um, 
you you gotta you gotta go with the Saints in this one with the Eagles benching Carson Wentz and all of the issues there they're having this year. I think the Saints can win this game big. I got the Saints 28-17, 28-17 over the Eagles. Um, next game, next game we got we got the Atlanta Falcons at four and eight versus the Los Angeles Chargers. All right, and um, this is another deadlock matchup. You know, a deadlock matchup the Falcons. And the Chargers. This is probably the least attractive game of the day. You know, from the standpoint that neither Atlanta or, nor Los Angeles has proved to be remotely trustworthy this season. Ne- neither team you can trust. Uh, and that's nothing new for both teams. So, um, neither has nothing to play for. Neither is consistent. Both have coaching question marks. Um, and it's hard to quantify home field advantage considering that the Chargers uh, lost. 45 to 0 in an empty stadium uh, just a week ago. So, you know, with that being said, I don't care. I mean, I think the the I think the Falcons have been playing slightly better this year. I'm going to go with the Falcons to win this game. Um, I, I'll go with the score of uh I would say 30 to 30 to 17. But again, this is just a, such a toss-up game between two teams that I've just been extremely underwhelming. I'll go with the I'll go with Atlanta. I think Atlanta, I think Atlanta's been playing slightly better, um, but again, this is just another deadlock toss-up game where it's hard to really determine which way it's going to go. Um, the next game, next game of the day. This is actually a really good game. This is actually a game I might sit down and actually watch. We got the Steelers at eleven and one versus the Buffalo Bills at nine and three. Oh. The Steelers have not played, I would say, anywhere close to the level their record indicates, if that makes sense, all right? I would say Pittsburgh padded their stats against the Cowboys, Bengals, and Jaguars this year. So I don't really look at that. I don't use that as much consideration into how I think that plays into this game. They struggled against the Ravens, and then they 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 lost to the Washington football team. Um, the Steelers have plenty of issues on their roster, um, and, and the Bills' offense continues to pick a lot of defenses apart because of you know this great scheme that Josh Allen, you know, with Josh Allen, who he's playing at close to MVP level, underrated player this year. Um, so, you know. This is a tough game to pick. Um, the Steelers, I, I, if I would have to describe the Steelers, I would say that the Steelers are are sloppy. Um, they have a one-dimensional offense. Um, and they've struggled lately. Um, ben Roethlisberger, um, this is one of the worst passer ratings he's had in his career, 84.2. That doesn't bode well going into this game at all. Um, I think I think what plays in the Roethlisberger's poor passer rating is also is, is drop passes. Um, that's a big factor for that team right there. But that's not something you can fix overnight. So on short rest um, against a talented defense, I think the Steelers are going to be in trouble in this particular game. Um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and pick the Buffalo Bills. I think the Buffalo Bills can win this game 24-20. And again, that score might not be dead on, but I think the Bills will find a way to, to get a win and win this game. But that's going to be one of the better games this week. That that might be a game that I chime in and check out. Uh, we got the Baltimore Ravens at 7-5 versus the Cleveland Browns at 9-3. And, and I think this is another good game that I also have my, my eye on as well. Now, all right, so, so I originally was going to go with Baltimore until I really looked at some some Browns highlights and I really looked at how they were playing. I didn't like what I saw from Baltimore um, despite that one-sided win Tuesday. Um, and, and the Browns present a much larger challenge than the Cowboys. Especially if, especially if that cornerback, uh, Denzel Ward, especially if Denzel Ward is able to return from that calf injury. So, Throw in that, the Ravens are likely tired and they're playing on the road. I can see Cleveland coming in to make a statement with a primetime victory um, over over one of their biggest rivals. So 
I mean, I, I think it's going to be another close game. Um, man, tough matchup right here. This just might be one of those games where you really got to watch. And I think it's just going to come down to who can have the better fourth quarter. Because I think it's going to be a close game going into the fourth quarter. <coughs> but I'm picking... I'm picking the Cleveland Browns to win this game. Again, this is one of those games that I feel is going to be decided by a field goal or less. But I think the Browns can come in and pull out the victory. I do love following the sport. It is fun to watch, especially as we head into these division races and then we go into the playoffs. So I think the NFL has done a good job of this year um, under, the, under the circumstances, um, giving everybody the feel of, of the original NFL. Um, Fantasy football has been bigger than ever this year, so you know I I, I give I, I give the NFL a, a big round of applause for what they've been able to do to make a successful season. So uh, these are my picks for Week 14. Uh, let me know what you think about my picks. If you agree or if you disagree with some of my takes, if I missed anything, just let me know in the comments of this video. Um, whenever we go live, if you guys want to talk football, just let me know. We can switch up the topic at any time and we can get on some of this football talk, um, especially when we get toward the weekend and these Sunday Sunday games um, are, are getting close. Feel free at any time to chime in about football and we can chop it up about that. But uh, make sure you guys like, comment and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to the video if you haven't done so already. All right. Um, we've been going live a lot more. We've been going live on Facebook. We've been going live on, on multiple platforms. So again, if, if you're one of our Facebook viewers, if you join from the website blog, if you're here on YouTube, salute to everybody for helping making this channel what it is. We're trying to grind our way to 20K subscribers. Maybe we can get there by the end of the year. I don't know. Um, you know, we, we were, you know, subscriber count was going crazy for, for about a month there. It's kind of slowed down right now. So we're inching closer and closer to 17K subscribers. Uh, but you know what? I have no complaints so far, man. I just want, I, like I said, I appreciate everybody who's been helping this channel succeed. Hey, but it's FYF Sportsman. It's been another great podcast video. Um, we'll be back next week. We'll do our week. We'll be doing our week 15 uh, picks as well. Um, we'll do week 16. Um, so we're going to be doing all of that up into the playoffs. And then obviously when the playoffs start, we're going to be following that directly as well here on FYF Sports. So uh, again, appreciate you guys for watching. It's been a great podcast video.